Welcome to the Vet and Create Academy, where we discuss veterinary emergency and critical care and science-based tools for veterinary professionals. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to dive into a fascinating veterinary paper that might just change how you practice, or at least give you some useful insights from the latest research. Here's what you'll learn by the end of this video. Is it possible to manage a canine patient with functional urinary outflow obstruction by using a cystostomy tube. If you're presented with a male dog who is straining to urinate at home and has a large, firm bladder on your physical exam, it is very important to rule out mechanical urethral obstruction. For example, secondary to a urethral stone, stricture, urethritis, or a mass. However, if mechanical outflow obstruction is ruled out, functional outflow obstruction caused by conditions where the bladder can't contract properly or the urethra doesn't relax, or sometimes both, must be strongly considered. In 2024, the ACVAM consensus statement standardized an umbrella term, functional outflow obstruction, that describes avoiding disorder encompassing previously used terms such as the trusa urethral dyssynergia, reflex dyssynergia, or idiopathic functional urinary outflow tract obstruction. Typically, functional outflow obstruction primarily affects young to middle-aged large and giant breed male dogs. In most cases, the treatment includes frequent urinary catheterizations and medical management such as alpha-adrenergic antagonists, for example, tamsulosin or prazosine, and often skeletal muscle relaxant. When medical management fails, other interventions may include castration, urethral stenting, urethral balloon dilation, and cystostomy tubes. So the focus of this current study was to evaluate how functional outflow obstruction was managed in dogs, especially when incorporating so-called percutaneous cystostomy tubes. These tubes can be placed using a minimal invasive procedure with a locking loop big tail catheter, like the one shown on the screen. To place a big tail catheter, dogs were anesthetized in lateral recumbency and the abdomen was sterilely prepared. An intravenous catheter was placed into a bladder using a standard cystocentesis technique. In this study, the procedure was performed with the fluoroscopy guidance. However, point of cure ultrasound can be used as well. Next, a contrast cystogram was performed and a guide wire was advanced into the urinary bladder out of the urethra. Over the guide wire, a lock and loop big tail catheter was placed into the urinary bladder and locked in place. Catheter was secured to the body wall using a purse string suture and finger trap pattern, and placement was successfully confirmed using fluoroscopy and contrast. Now, let's break down the results from this study. The researchers included 12 male dogs diagnosed with functional outflow obstruction. Breeds represented included Labrador Retrievers, Akitas, German Shepherds other large breeds. The dogs range from 1 to 11 years old with a median age of seven and a half years. Clinical signs included strangeria and plaquiuria with symptoms persisting for an average of about nine months before referral, which is a long time. Functional outflow obstruction was diagnosed after ruling out mechanical obstructions like stones or masses on imaging in neurological conditions as well. So how were these dogs treated? Initial management almost in all dogs focused on medical therapy, which typically included alpha adrenergic antagonists, such as tamsulosin or prazosine, chemical muscle relaxants, and occasionally Bithanical or diazepam, depending on the clinician's preference. Despite this, 67% of the dogs, or 8 of 12 dogs, were classified as refractory to medical therapy. 
meaning their signs persisted for at least one week, even with recommended medication at appropriate doses. Of eight dogs refractory to medical management, five were managed with a cystostomy tube, two continued medical management, and one was having at home intermittent urinary catheterization. Overall, a total of seven dogs received cystostomy two. Five of the seven dogs stopped needing their cystostomy tubes at different times. Two within one to two weeks, one at three to four weeks, and two after more than four weeks. In addition, five out of seven dogs, or 71%, with a cystostomy tube had a good to excellent outcome meaning their signs result or were manageable with minimal intervention without the need to catheterize them. In contrast, only 20% or one of five dogs managed without a cystostomy tube had a good or excellent outcome. In terms of the rate of recurrent obstructions, only one dog with a cystostomy tube versus four out of five dogs without a cystostomy tube experienced a recurrent obstruction. In general, cystostomy tube placement was associated with relatively high risk of complication. For example, 71% of all dogs with cystostomy tubes develop moderate and or severe complications, such as breaking or chewing on the tube, the need for tube exchange, chronic infections, tube dislodgement, requirement replacement, or even your abdomen that occurred in two dogs. Despite these challenges, cystostomy tubes provided an important tool to manage functional outflow obstruction while adjusting medications without repeated urethral catheterizations, which is frustrating for the client. Can you imagine bringing your dog to a vet for a repeated urethral catheterization for several weeks or even months in a row? Not only is it very time consuming, but it may get very expensive. Of course, this study is far from being definitive, and it definitely had a lot of limitations. It was retrospective. It had very small sample size, and it lacked standardization in diagnostics and follow-up. No meaningful stats could be performed due to the small number of patients included in this paper. So what are the main takeaways here? First, the study suggests that Early consideration of cystostomy tubes could help avoid recurrent obstructions, reduce client frustration, and even prevent premature euthanasia in cases of functional outflow obstruction in large breed male dogs. If you are managing a dog with a refractory functional outflow obstruction, you may consider discussing the option of a cystostomy tube with clients early in the process. On the other hand, it is important to warn your clients that complications are relatively common. However, they may be manageable in a lot of cases. Cystostomy tubes aren't designed for long-term use because they're delicate. It's important to handle them carefully and manage them properly to minimize the risk of complication. Finally, percutaneous cystostomy tubes should only be placed by veterinarians with specialized training and given to clients who understand how delicate these catheters are. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Before you go, I need your help choosing the next topic we'll cover on our channel. Please drop a comment below to vote for one of the papers displayed on the screen. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.